Hello. Right, been asked to do question 16. Now it's a vectors question uh, about position vectors and constant acceleration. So we've got two things going on here. We've got a particle P, which is initially at rest, so U is zero, is initially at that position vector, so that's it, that's that one's starting point or its initial displacement, and it moves with constant acceleration of 3i minus 4j. So it tells us constant acceleration, so we can use so that. Okay, in terms of displacement, it starts off at minus 4, 5. Initially, it's zero. Well, hang on a minute. Now, we can't, that's where it is initially. So we can't write that if we're trying to calculate where it is after a certain amount of time. But we can write the acceleration like that. And we can write that like that. Okay, so this particle that's moving, the velocity it's moving with in metres per second is how far it's going each second. So it's the path of the particle each second because it's going in a straight line. Okay. How do we know it's going in a straight line? It's got constant acceleration, so it has to. Okay, so if we use V equals U plus AT, that tells us that its velocity, once it's started moving, is 0 plus 3 minus 4 times some value of T. Okay, so at each point, its velocity, it's getting... It's accelerating constantly, so as time increases, your velocity is increasing. Right, this is particle P. Now, particle Q also moves in a straight line, and it passes through the points with position vectors I minus J and 10 plus C. Now, it tells us in the next part of the question that C is minus 13, but I'm going to ignore that because we need to show that. So I'm going to pretend I don't know where C is. Okay, so it's going through the point. William, shut up. It's going through the point with position vectors i minus j. So 1i minus 1j, that's down there. Okay, so that's 1 minus 1. If this is i and j. Okay. Right. Okay, and then it's going, and it's going through 10i plus cj. So 10i plus cj. Sneeze, <coughs> which has position vector 10. So remember, position vectors and coordinates they all mean the same sort of thing one minus one. It's just telling you where a particle is in relation to something else. So the path, the path that this one is taking is this. So its velocity is traveling along that um, vector there. Oh, excuse me, right now. If we use a bit of cheeky Pythagoras, we're going from 1 to 10, so that bit there is 9, and we're going from minus 1 up to C. So we're going C minus minus 1, so C plus 1 up there. If that was down, if that was down there and C was negative, then we'd do exactly, we'd do exactly the same thing, except now you'd have minus c minus minus one and you'd still end up with the same answer eventually okay so now we know that this vector here this is moving with a velocity of 9i and c plus 1j now because they are parallel now that word is very important here because they're moving along parallel paths the velocity of one is going to be the, a multiple of the other. Okay, so some multiple in this case, let's, let's just call it t. Okay, and quite clearly you can see the t has to be three. Okay, t has to be three because nine divided by three gives us that three. Right, okay, so... Excuse me. So not, so let's multiply that vector by 3. That gives us 9 minus 12. Okay, so that tells us, yep, our tops are the same. And our C plus 1 must be equal to minus 12. Therefore, C equals minus 13 as required. 
Okay, so to find a an expression for the position vector of P at time T, so at time T, let's go back to up here, the position vector of P at time T seconds, so it's starting off at minus 4, 5, okay, and it's going... It's accelerating. Mm. Can we use s equals ut plus a half at squared? Well, the thing is, whatever we do, we need to add this minus 4, 5 onto it, don't we? Because that's where it's starting. So, yeah, let's use s equals ut plus a half at squared. And we're going to add minus 4, 5 onto that at the end. So it's going to be that plus minus 4, 5. Because it's not starting at the origin, is it? So we need to add that on. Okay, so u is 0, half of a. So 1.5 minus 2 times t squared plus minus 4, 5. I think that would be a pretty good expression for the position vector. Instead of calling it S, should we call it R for position vector? Okay. So that means it's this far along from minus 4, 5 after t seconds. Right. Hence, prove that the paths of P and Q are not collinear. Okay, Pence proved that the paths of P and Q are not collinear. Okay, so to prove that they are not collinear, collinear means that they lie, oops, that they lie on the straight line, on a straight line. Okay, so what we could say is, well, we know that, we definitely know that 1 minus 1 um, is on the path of Q. So really, if they are collinear, if they are travelling along the same line, then at some point, 1 minus 1 should sat satisfy this equation. So if we say 1 minus 1 at some point will satisfy this equation, okay, rearrange, so we'll add 5 to that, take 5 away from that. Oops. Made a mess of that, haven't I? Minus 2t squared. So in that case, for this side to be true, we want t to be equal to root 3 for the j coordinates to be true. But if t was equal to root 3, so t squared is 3, 3 times 1.5 is 4.5. Uh -uh. So therefore, since... 5 is not equal to 1.5 times root 3 squared, then they are not collinear. Collinear. Not on the same line. Okay, I hope that helps. If it doesn't, as always, give me a shout and I'll have a bash at trying to explain it differently. Okay, bye-bye.